scripture reading and our prayer followed by our welcome address. Good morning, New Hope. The scripture today is John 1, chapter 3, 23 and 24. And it reads, and this is the commandment that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he has given us his commandment. And, and he kept, and he kept that keep, keeper, his commandments dwell, dwells in, it, in him. And he, in, in us, and hereby we know that the, uh, that just by is in us by the spirit in which he has given us. Amen. May the, may the Lord bless the reader, doer, and believer in his holy word. Amen. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointing fall. On me. Let us pray. Oh, Father God, we need you this morning. Let the power of your Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide on each and every one of us this morning. Lord, we come to say we thank you, Father God. How you made a way for us, Lord. How you opened doors that were closed in our face. Lord, how you kept us as we tarried from here and there. Lord, look down upon us this morning, Lord. Father God, send your spirit, Father God, to New Hope Baptist Church here, Lord. Father God, some come for one reason, some come for another, Lord. 
Father God, I don't know all the petitions, Father God, laid out, Father God. But I know that you are yet able, Father God, and that there's healing in your wings, Father God. And Father God, you said that all we needed to do was ask with a sincere and contrite heart, Father God, and that you would supply all our needs according to your riches and glory, Father God. Look and have mercy on us this morning, Father God. Father God, realizing that we're few in number this morning, Lord, but Father God, we have turned aside and we've gathered ourselves here. Father God, in this holy and sanctified place, Father God, to bring the praise and honor and glory to your name, Father God. Father God, we pray for our pastor and his wife, Father God, Father God, as they travel the dangerous highways and byways, Father God. Father God, as they prepare to preach your uncompromised gospel, Lord. Father God, we pray for the man of God, Father God, that's going to break the bread of life this morning, Father God. Crown his head with more wisdom and knowledge, Father God. Father God, and send the word, Father God, to our Father God, that might prick the sin-sick soul, Father God. Bless the singing choir, Father God, each and every musician, Father God, each and every deacon and officer, Father God, here at New Hope Baptist Church, Father God, that we might have a glorious, and uh, Father God, uh, Father God, a uh, Holy Ghost-filled time in your name, Lord. Bless us right now, Father God. The sick, the shut in, the lost and the dying, Father God. Father God, not here, not just here in Seaside, California, Father God, but Father God, to each and every corner of Monterey County, Father God, all over the state of California, Father God, that your spirit might reach out beyond, Father God, our borders, Father God, all over this nation, land, and even this world, Father God, but we know that you're soon to come, Father God. And Father God, we want to be found, Father God, with a, with a pleasing heart, a pleasing soul, Father God, that you might find us working, Father God, that we might be received of you, Father God, in that land of no more, Lord. No more crying, no more dying, no more suffering, no more pain. We pray and ask these all other blessings in the master's name of Jesus Christ and all responded by saying amen, amen, and amen. This time, can we say amen? It makes our way to give us our welcome this morning. Can the church say amen? Amen. amen. Church, giving all praises to God, who's the head of my life. Respect to Pastor Carter and his absence and all the other ministers uh, in the pulpit. It's my honor to welcome all of you today. I hope you enjoy our worship service and uh, hopefully something is said or done to make you return. And if you are looking for a church home, please consider New Hope. Thank you and may God bless you.
remember I and we are glad yes we are glad somebody glad here today somebody glad today Praying for Rev. He still said he kind of forgot what he was to doing. But we're glad because this is the day that the Lord has made. So at this time, Rev's up to lead us in our offering on today. So you're in the hands of Reverend Kidd as he proceeds with the offering this morning. Heavenly Father, I know that much. I thank you for this day, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father, you have given us treasures from heaven. And I thank you, Father, all that you have given us. Give us a clean heart, Father, that we might give back a portion that you have given us. I pray, Father, that those of us who were able to give, let them give abundantly. Those, Father, who only has a penny, those of us who only have a nickel, in your sight, Father, let that be as equal as those of us that have emptied our pockets. We pray these things, Father, because you gave it to us, and we pray, Father, that you look down on us and you receive back the portion that you've given us. In Jesus' name we pray, Father. Amen. We are in the hands of the ushers. to read this right here it says new hope baptist church is now accepting online and mobile tithings and offerings the website is nhbc seaside california i'm sorry seaside.com p.o box 834 seaside california 93955 all right, all right. would be www.giblify.com.
Forgive me, Father. You know what the problem is. Nevertheless, thank you, Father, for the monies that you have given us, Father. And we pray thee, the Lord, that you open up the windows to receive back that which you have given us. In Jesus' name, Father, not my name. In Jesus' name, I pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. It's time for our altar prayer. And I was trying to make out a list. And, but you know someone that stands in the need of prayer. But on our list, we put uh, Pastor Carter and Lady Carter. First on here, the angel and the fragrance of his house. It was mentioned that Sister Wade is having surgery on tomorrow. We have Deaconess Boone on here. She's under the weather. And I thought about the mothers and the fathers of our church, and I looked over the church, and I've seen a few, but we're praying for the mothers and the fathers. We've seen Mother Banks in the house, Mother Davis, Mother Hollins, Mother Woodruff. We thought about Mother Andrews and Mother Bean. There's others. We're praying for Deacon Willie Brown's family, lost his sister. He's back in the house. We're praying for our sister... Crystal Cunningham, We're praying for the Lewis family, the Johnson family, the Morgan family, the Isom family, Rudy Collins. The list goes on. We're praying for Reverend Kidd, We're praying for Reverend Welch, Reverend Trope, and Reverend Boone. We're praying for you, my father's children. I don't know about you, but I often say this that I stand in need a prayer and I do battles throughout the week ups and downs pains in my body and I know I don't, I'm not alone someone in the house today stands in need of prayer at this time I'm going to have Reverend Boone come and pray the altar prayer at this time church say amen There's been so many times that we've opened our eyes to see a dawn of a new day. There's many, been so many times that we've slept at night and didn't know if we would see another day. But we do know that our, because of our being is because of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We live, we breathe, and we understand our being is because of him. And we're here at this moment, Father, just to give you honor, praise, and glory. Because you deserve it. We just can't say it enough, Father. We have to live it. We have to be it. Because we understand without you, Father, there is no us. Father, we give you honor, praise, and glory. We praise you for the, the rising of the sun. Father, we praise you for the food on our table. Father, we praise you for the strength in our body. Father, we praise you for you first loving us. Father, we thank you for all these things. And we give you glory, honor, and praise. Father, we know that there are some here today, including myself, Father, that have been going through storms. But Father, you a storm breaker. Father, there have been some here today that has sickness in their body. But we know that you are a doctor in the sick house, Father. Father, we don't know the some that are having problems in their family. But Father, you are a problem solver. Father, there are things that we don't do. But you know about those things, Father. Father, sometimes we're disobedient. But Father, you still love us. And we give you thanks, Father. There's just so many things, Father, that we go through each and every day. But you're a problem solver, Father. 
Father, we love and we need you and we can't do without you. We want to praise your holy name. We want to praise you in our jobs. We want to praise you in our household. We want to praise you on the streets, Father. We want to continue to praise you and be obedient to you, Father. And Father, if we couldn't thank you enough, hmm, we thank you. We thank you at this moment. We thank you at this minute. We thank you in this hour, Father. Because there's so many things, Father, that you do for us that we don't deserve. And we love and we need you, Father, right now. We ask that you bless our pastor, the leader of this flock, Father. Take care of him, nourish him, bring him back to us, Father, safe. And his helpmate, Father. Bless those behind prison walls, Father. Sick and shut in. There's so many that's sick today, Father. I can't call them all, but you know who they are. And that's including my wife, Father. Touch your Father, as only you can. Father, we love and we need you right now. And we can't do without you. And as we gather today in your house of worship, we want to give you honor, praise, and glory. Hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah. It's the highest honor that we can give you, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you right now. And we'll be so careful to give you all the honor, praise, and glory. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Every single promise. Every single promise. Here I 
must stand. All the words are spoken, Jesus. I believe. Oh. I believe you, Jesus. Hey, hey. Oh. I believe you, God. That you came through 40 and two generations. That you hung, bled, and died. I believe you, God. You took nails in your hands, nails in your feet. Hey, hey. I believe you, God. You were laid in a borrowed tomb, Jesus. For three long days, hey. But early Sunday morning, you rose with all power in your hand, hey. That sinful man might have a right to the tree of life. I believe, I believe. I believe your word. I believe your way. I believe your will is true. Each and every day. Glory to God. Can the house say amen? amen? Isn't God good this morning? He woke us up this morning. He started us on our way. I can't tell it all. Amen. I can't tell it all. I believe. <laughs> amen. First, giving honor to God, who is the head of my life, to my pastor in his absence, Pastor Carter, and his wonderful and beautiful wife, Sister Carter, to my fellow preachers, Reverend Welch, Reverend Boone, and Reverend Kidd. Love these brothers. To the deaconesses, and to the deacons, and to the ushers, and the rest of my church family and the auxiliaries. And I want to say a special thanks to my beautiful wife, Deaconess Trope. Love her to death for putting up with me. Amen. I just want to say good morning, everybody. Before we get started, let's have a moment of prayer. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, the Christ, who we depend on and trust in, dear God, Lord, I'm asking you to allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, Lord God, to be acceptable in your sight this morning, Father God. Word my mouth, Lord God, anoint me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, Father God. Forgive me, Father God, of anything that's not of you, dear God, so that your word will go forth with power and truth, God. Lord, we thank you in advance, Father God, because we know your word, Lord God, will do what it's set out to do. In Jesus' name. Amen. My scripture this morning, brothers and sisters, is coming out of the book of 1 John. That's 1 John. The third chapter, coming out of the 23rd and the 24th verse. My theme this morning, you can, I can, trust God's word. Trust my word. Amen. And the re word reads like this in the 23rd verse of 1 John, the third chapter. And this is the commandment that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he kept, and he that kept his commandments dwelleth in him and he in him 
And hereby we know that he abided in us by the spirit which he has given us. Amen. You may be sitting. In 1 John 3, 23 and 24, and yes, John, who was the, the disciple of Jesus Christ, is the writer of this book, as well as 2 John and 3 John, the Gospel of John, as well as Revelations. John doesn't give the recipient of his letter or who they were or where they were, but it's definitely a letter, a man, a letter or insult, if you will, to the believers. The fact that it gives no indication of who he was writing to suggests it was a letter circulated to a number of places to believers abroad. The letter was written somewhere around the, the time of 85 and 95 AD after the writing of the Gospel of John and before he wrote revelations on the island of Patmos. John, who is now a mature child of God, he has aged like fine wine this morning, and he is also walking in that fullness of maturity in Christ. He's addressing and practicing counseling. He is addressing practical counseling and having the victory in our everyday walk in Christ, amen. John says, and this is the command, or the order, the charge, the precept, the conjunction, which, is, which means the act we need to carry out as believers. That we should believe on the name of Jesus, the son of Jesus, believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us command. The first thing I thought when I saw commandment was chairman. If you ever come to Sunday school and you hear the word commandment, Deacon Greenwell, our chairman, he always says, it's not a suggestion right. this morning. <laughs> it is not a suggestion right. or a request right. to be done situationally. And the second thing I, that popped up in my mind was as John is telling us to believe on the name of Jesus and love one another, he is make it, making it look like the two can't be separated one from the other. He could have easily put an S on the end to make it plural. But because of the situation, because of the gravity of the situation, he felt strongly about it spiritually that he felt it was a need to pair them as one, like Siamese twins, amen. Like Siamese twins, unable to be separated. You can't have one Siamese twin without the other. And you can't have belief in Christ without his love, amen. And Jesus gave that same commandment in John 13 and 34 at the Last Supper. That not only was followed by John, mm -hmm. but that's what he taught the new believers as well as the seasoned ones yeah. when he wrote this letter yes, to the people of God, as we can see in verse 23, amen? Yeah. Belief and love. Belief in its tense uh -huh. should have already taken place in our lives. It should have already happened. Yes, Belief is not just a head knowledge. Right. It is not enough to know who he is. I know who Snoop Doggy Dog is. I know who Samuel L. Jackson is. I know who Little Wayne is. I know who Chris Brown is. But I don't have a personal relationship with these people that I know about. I just know them. A relationship is what we're looking for here this morning. When Jesus comes into our lives, it's more than knowing him with a head knowledge, who he is. It becomes an end-all and be-all event, 
and a moment in one's life yes, where we are involving. We're involving our faith. On, we're involving our trust. Yes, we're involving sir. our commitment yes, to the yes, Lord. Yes, we took the opportunity that was presented to us. The word here is opportunity that was presented to us. Opportunity that so many will not take, but yet and still, the opportunity has been presented by a preacher, a teacher, a friend, family member, or for that matter, a stranger who actually took out the time to be a witness, a witness, for Jesus Christ, doing Acts 1 and 8, amen. Going out and telling somebody about Jesus Christ this morning. Acknowledging him as our Lord and Savior. We did Romans 9 and 10 where it says that if you confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Thou shalt be saved. And by us doing that, we now are brothers and sisters in Christ. If, 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 if we now have belief in Jesus, remember the rest of the command. We are to love. It has to follow this morning. One doesn't work without the other. Love in its tense is continual. It can't be separated from from you can't be separated from you except in Christ and because you have accepted him your belief and love need to meet together and be attached like those Siamese twins that we talked about earlier and if any of us if any of you are like me sometime I'm in need of a tune up in Christ to love other people better than I do sometimes. I don't know about you. I don't know about you, but I don't believe Jesus Christ ever thought that you and I would get it right all the time in this sin sick body that we indwell in, amen? But let me let you in on a little secret. If we do 1 John 3.24, and he is talking to us as well as them. And what I mean them is them of old. That's right. When he said in verse 24, and he that keepeth his commandment dwelleth in him, and he in him. The more you walk in obedience, because the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. And in that obedience, what is obedience, amen? Let me give you the definition of what obedience is because you need to know what obedience is this morning so you can follow along and do what needs to be done because, you know, we have a problem with, you know, what words mean sometimes. But let me give you the definition this morning. It is to listen. It is to hearken to a command, to obey the obedient and to, and to be obedient and to submit. So what I'm saying is when you submit yourself, to his commandments and do what he says and trusting in his word, my God, your life, my life will be in a better place. The closer, the closer, amen, the closer the walk in us clinging on to Jesus, the more we will act like him. You, you really buckle down in Christ and read and meditate on him day and night. When you do that, when you do that, how much better, you, if you ever notice, how you tend to act when people behave badly, when you dwell in him, when you're reading his word, when you're meditating on him, your actions become different, amen? Your actions and your behavior is different. It's different from when that motorist salutes you, amen? It gets different when that lady that don't say excuse me when she runs into you with a basket. It's when, <laughs> it's when someone closes the door on you when they see you coming. Your attitude, 
in Christ changes when God's love is in the forefront. His love. His love. Don't have excuses. God love don't have excuses as to why he's loving you. It's not predicated on what you or I do. Because if that was the case, when man fell, amen, he should have put our behinds in hell back then. But the Bible says in John 3, 16, that God so loved the world, amen, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever will believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He gave his only begotten to the world. That means to people that accept Jesus as well as the people that don't, amen. His love that's so deep and pure for us is on display in 1 John 3, verse 1, where he says, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. He's saying, look, Reverend Welch, look, Reverend Boone, look, Reverend Kidd. Look at this real good thing that I'm presenting before you. Look at the heights of my love that you can't see over. Look at the width of my love that you can't wrap your arms around. My love can't be accounted for by you. It's a one-sided situation here where I'm doing everything, meaning God is doing everything. But you know what's so amazing about this whole situation here? There are plenty of people that don't want to do nothing or have nothing to do with God or Jesus. It's not in, the, in their DNA. Some things they just don't care about, and sometimes that is the situation. God gives us free will, and it's on display every time someone rejects Jesus as well as us accepting Jesus Christ in our life. Dwell in him. Stay put. Don't move. Remain locked in. Amen. Be in a servant. Yeah. Dwell yeah. in him so that he will be in you. Right. And this is how we know that he is in us. It is by the spirit which he has given us. His spirit in us is known and manifest in our lives and our conduct. When the Holy Spirit uh -huh. convicts us yeah. of our sins yeah. and inspires us uh -huh. to confess them yeah. unto God yeah. through Jesus Christ, yeah. and then that's, amen, uh -huh. how we know that we, mm -hmm. amen, are his children. Yes, By his spirit, By spirit that he has given to yeah. us yeah. through his son, Jesus yeah. Christ, uh -huh. this yeah. morning. That's our assurance. Yeah. And in that, we can trust God's yes, word. Sir. It's only what we can do for Christ uh -huh. that will last. Right. We serve a God that wrapped himself mm -hmm. in flesh, yeah. came down from glory, yeah. didn't right. have to, right. but he knew that we needed a savior this morning. But his love that is ever present in him showed up and showed out by coming down from glory to die for a wretch like we. They put him, in a, they put him on a cross one Friday morning they put nails in his hand. They put nails in his feet. And early one Sunday morning, he got up on that third day. He got up on that third day. That third day that he got up gave us the ability to walk in Jesus, in his obedience, following the commands that he has given to us. Are you walking in his commandment this morning? Are you walking? Are you believing? Are you trusting in God's word, his word? which passes all our understanding. We know that if we walk in it, if we believe in it, and we trust in it, God is going to bless us. And it ain't, once again, he's blessing us because of we're being obedient. He's blessing us because that's who he is at the end of the day. Because we know we don't always do right. You got to remember that. We don't always do right. And God still blesses us anyway. But in spite of ourselves, you got to love God for his love for you. His agape love that is so different, so different, so different this morning that you got to respect what he has done for us. Sending his son down from the heavens. 
wrapping himself up in the flesh so that we might have life this morning. I am so thankful. I'm so grateful, grateful to him and what he has done for us. Are you and will you follow his commandments this morning? The commandment that G Jesus gave to John and his disciples. John learned from that. Yes, sir. And he wanted us all yes, sir. to have that opportunity. Yes, and that's why this episode was wrote. So that we would have opportunity. Yes. The opportunity to learn yes, what it takes to be a child of God. Yes. And to walk in the fullness of Jesus Christ this morning. We can all have that joy that John is talking about in the word of God. When we have him working in our life, yes, the joy of the Lord is our strength this morning. When you have God's joy, it's different from happiness. It's different from being happy. It's different. But let me tell you why it's different. Because it ain't predicated on what's going on in our life this morning. It's predicated because of what he's doing in our life. It's predicated of what he did on Calvary. It's predicated because we are his children. That is the difference. That is why his joy is what we need to have in our lives. God's joy this morning. I am convinced that I'm going to keep walking with Jesus Christ no matter what comes with me. No matter hell or high water that comes in my life, I'm staying put, I'm staying in, I'm remaining. I'm going to do everything that I can to walk with Christ as he walks with me. I love him because he's indwelled in me and he brings up all that joy. He brings up all that that I have within me to tell somebody that I don't know about who Jesus Christ is this morning. And if you don't know him this morning, oh my God, if you don't know him, you don't know what you're missing out on. You don't know what you're missing out on. He's a wonder this morning. He's a wonder this morning and he loves you. He loves you because that's who he is. My God, that's who he is this morning. His love for us is unbinding. His love for us. My God, Jesus. His love. I don't even know what to tell you anymore. I, don't, I just don't know what to tell you anymore about who he is this morning. I want you to let that marinate. Let it marinate. Let it marinate in your mind. Let it marinate down in your soul so you get it this morning of who he is and what he is to you in your life if you allow him to be a part of it. Now, you got to accept him this morning. You ask, how do you do that? And I'm sorry if I'm stepping on toes right now, but somebody don't know who Jesus Christ is. He told us we have to admit that we are a sinner and believe that he is the only remedy, the only remedy, the only remedy and the only way that we can be saved from our sick sin souls this morning. And we have to confess him as our Lord and Savior. And as we confess him as our Lord and Savior and walk in him, then we are children of God this morning. Are you a child of God this morning? Are you a child of God this morning? If you are, God bless you. If you're not, the doors is now open as the reverend comes to you. Amen. God bless. If you don't mind standing right now, the doors of the church are open. What a word. I was thinking about Jesus when he often spoke. He didn't moan. He didn't groan. He didn't have to have the organ keyed up. He just simply spoke his word. Today his word is spoken. A lot of times we hide up under the pew or I'm a member. But today perhaps there's someone here today who needs to turn it over to Jesus. Amen. He says in his word, the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Look like everybody in here knows him, but I'll be a fool to believe that. 
He said in his message, you have the opportunity to either accept or to reject him. I know some of you came wanting to hear a pastor, but pastor preached this morning at 4.30 this morning and it's 7.30 in Philadelphia. The word came from this man of God today for you. You might be in a place, you might be in a place where you just need prayer. As we extend the invitation, and we dare not go past this word without reading it to you, it says, Revelation 3 and 20, says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in, and I will sup with him, and he with me. In his text, he talked about he's bestowed upon each and every one of us. His spirit says he indwelled us. And he said in return, we indwell him. So it's an exchange. Maybe in your walk today, you're not where you should be. I know y'all want me to shut up. This church is over. Let's go. I'm not. I'm not because I'm to disturb your peace and introduce you to real peace. Would there be one today? Would there be one that says, I just need prayer? You can raise your hand right where you are. You don't have to come. We got one. We got two. We got three. We're not bidding, but we're talking about your soul. I'm going to say this and I'm going to shut up and we're going to pray. We called a friend this week in Georgia. Always ask about her mother. How's, how's your mom? How's your dad doing? I forget. I lost the number somehow. She, she said, I'll get back to you in a few minutes. I said, take your time. Called me back in 45 minutes. Said, Jimmy, you're not going to believe me. She said, my sister went to go check on my mom. My mom and dad were dead in the house. So this is the day that the Lord has made. We don't say that to scare, to threaten, to cause fear. But I'm sure when they went to sleep that night, they thought they were going to wake up the next morning. To not know Christ and the opportunity is presented to you today. And him call you in to judgment on tomorrow. And the preacher said you can either accept him or reject him. Would there be one? Says I'm out of the ark of safety. Shall we pray? Praying for those who lifted their hands and just requested prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for your goodness, for your mercy, for your love and your kindness, Father. This is the day that you made. This is a day, Father, that you allowed us to come to your house to worship you and to praise you. Yeah, my friend might not have been sitting beside me. Or, yeah, the pastor might have been missing, but Father, you met us here. And for that, we're grateful. So Father, we're asking you even now for that person that's there that's doubting or fearing, not in ark of safety, Father, that you would touch them. Touch them from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet. Father, also we're praying for those who say, I just stand in need of prayer, Father. We pray, God, that you would touch them, encourage them, lift up their head, Father. Oh, God, and we'll be careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. This we ask in Jesus' name. And the church saying amen, 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 amen. and amen. We're going to sing it so we can go home.
eternal God, our Father, once again, here we are, your children. We just came out today to give you praise, to give you glory, and to give you honor, to acknowledge you as Lord and Savior in our life, Father. And Father, remind us, we pray this week, this afternoon, even before we go out the doors of this sanctuary, what the commandment is that you would have for our lives, that we adhere to the commandment, Father, that we walk in love, for you are love, for God so loved the world that he gave us, his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And for that, we're grateful. Look upon our pastor, give him rest, touch him. Give him to his companion rest, touch her, touch your mind. Give him safe travel through the air, Father, as they make their way back, Father. Pour into them what they poured out, Father, Look upon uh, greater exodus as they celebrate 50 years of service unto you, Father. Look upon new hope. Look upon every member under the sound of my voice, Father. We'll be careful to give you praise, glory, and honor. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And they all sang together. Amen. 